Hi everybody, my name is Valeria Chavez. I work at the Instituto de Ingeniería UNAM in Mexico. And today I will present you the work title Criteria for Implementation of Green Infrastructure in Coastal Areas. Unlike traditional infrastructure, which only takes into account socioeconomic and political factors, or ecological restoration, which focuses on the recovery of ecosystem health, resistance and resilience, ecosystem-based solutions have multifunctional goals determined by the ecological and socioeconomic conditions of each specific site. The recent interest in integrating coastal ecosystems in protection schemes against flood and erosion risks has led to a variety of countries and international institutions developing policies to guide action on this front. There are some policies and guidelines that are not exclusive for coastal environments, like building with nature in the Netherlands, engineering with nature in the USA, nature-based solutions, ecological engineering, and working with nature. But there are some others that only focus on coastal protection, ecosystem services, and coastal management, like living shorelines in the USA, that has the objective to find solutions to protect coastal areas from storms and provide ecosystem services and preserve the connectivity of ecosystems, or shoreline management plans in the UK that develop strategies to reduce the threat of floods and erosion with possible benefits for the environment, society, and economy. The concept that we used in this work is green infrastructure, which refers to natural, semi-natural, or artificial constructions that contribute to the conservation or restoration of biological diversity and the enhancement of ecosystem services. The key concepts in this kind of projects are connectivity, multifunctionality, integration, and a multi-scale approach. Coastal green infrastructure projects include broad and contrasting aspects, such as recovery of the structure and functionality of natural ecosystems, creation of artificial ecosystems, engineering structures that depend on the functioning of the surrounding ecosystems, traditional engineering projects adapted to reduce their environmental impact, and corrective actions applied to structures and land uses which damage the environment and threaten socioeconomic aspects. Green infrastructure is widely seen as a solution that can respond to economic, social and developmental demands while ensuring ecosystem functioning. The term green infrastructure is not necessarily synonymous with soft solutions, nor are rigid solutions synonymous with grey actions. For example, often beach nourishment efforts induce an increase in turbidity and sediment transport rates, mainly associated with the content of very fine material. In these pictures, we can see a beach nourishment built in Cancun, in the Mexican Caribbean, in late 2009, after Hurricane Dean in 2007. Before the occurrence of this hurricane, the beach had already been altered with that nourishment in 2006. The material used for this nourishment had a very different sphericity than the one of the native sediment, making it easier to transport and the result was an erosion of the dry beach. Even the beach nourishment is a soft solution, in this case it didn't provide the services required by the green infrastructure. When these nourishment actions are carried out near coral reefs, the increasing water turbidity and friction effects can cause coral reef degradation. In these cases, a rigid infrastructure, such as an artificial reef, would be more suitable if it functions as a refuge for key species, thus offering conditions necessary for the establishment of a surrogate ecosystem. Another example is that in some conditions, dune stabilization can lead to erosion of adjacent beaches. Silva et al. in 2017 defined five types of green infrastructure that are classified according to their degree of naturalness. This broad classification increases the feasibility of a green infrastructure project by incorporating the physical and ecological characteristics of its site, as well as the availability of local materials and human resources. The classification also highlights the relationship between the degree of naturalness, the time-space requirement, and the level of economic investment needed. On the other hand, the classification also recognizes that the degree of uncertainty of the results of the project increases with the degree of naturalness. The most natural alternative is called nature-based, which includes habitat conservation and restoration. For example, this dune restoration in Playa Casino in Brazil. Then we have engineered ecosystems. This alternative refers to the rehabilitation of ecosystems, like a beach in the Mexican Caribbean that had its resilience improved by an artificial coral reef. 
The ecologically enhanced soft and hard engineering includes traditional alternatives, both modified with the conservation of natural processes. For example, artificial dunes built in Veracruz, Mexico to reduce the sediment transport in the area and the post-tsunami measurements planned in Chile. Finally, the engineering is an alternative of removing structures to recover natural fluxes in the system. This was performed in Playa Dorada in Dominican Republic. The feasibility of implementing a green infrastructure project depends on the characteristics of the site, but there are some general trends in the requirements for each type of green infrastructure, like the ecosystems present in the area that are the mining resources for the design of the project. The availability of time is a key element of decision and refers to the level of urgency of an intervention. In this way, the process of evaluating the viability of the use of green infrastructure recognizes that in cases where lives are at risk, immediate action must be implemented to control the emergency. However, it is highly recommended that such intervention can be easily removed so that it can be replaced or gradually integrated by a green infrastructure when circumstances permit. The space available on the site to be intervened is another determining factor for the selection of green infrastructure. In cases where space is a limitation, it is proposed to evaluate the possibility of obtaining it towards land or sea. Space to land can be generated, for example, by relocating infrastructure that is obstructing the natural dynamics on the site. On the other hand, a project with a greater degree of naturalness often has increased levels of uncertainty. Therefore, more space and more flexible legislation and governance arrangements focusing on sustainability goals may be needed. Reducing or dealing with this uncertainty is the aim of a transdisciplinary research. The availability of local resources such as sediment, native vegetation and labor are related to the feasibility of implementing a green infrastructure alternative, as well as the ability to generate ecological and socioeconomic benefits. In addition, the existence of these resources decrease the cost of the implementation. In most of the cases, the projects are developed to solve a problem instead of being preventive. In these scenarios, hybrid alternatives are more viable. First, the problem should be contained and a reversible traditional solution should be implemented. After monitoring, a modification in the solution should lead to a recovery of more suitable conditions and finally the resilience of the system should be evaluated. All this process should be monitored to have an opportunity to act according to the performance of the implemented solution. This figure from Sanz et al. illustrates in which conditions different solutions could be implemented. On coasts exposed to high wave energy and with reduced space available for changes in coastline position, hard solutions should be considered. Dunes can provide additional protection against the storms and serve as a physical barrier against flooding. If the wave energy is not sufficiently dissipated by coastal ecosystems, nourishments can increase the width of the beach and the amount of the wave attenuation. Finally, in areas with low to medium hydrodynamic forcing, Ecosystem engineering may be suitable to provide coastal safety, given that there is enough space available. From documented experiences, it is possible to identify the factors that have determined the success of some green infrastructure projects. These factors can be listed as follows. Number one, adequate diagnosis. The design of the solution will depend on the origin of the problem that needs to be solved. A correct diagnosis allows an appropriate coastal protection project selection and is the main element that will condition its success or failure. Number two, conservation of mass and energy flows. It is common in projects with solutions that use rigid infrastructure to find that over time, the problem that sought to be solved was only transferred to another point within the same coastal cell. Avoiding this is a way to assure that the project has been successful. Number three, mimicking natural functions. The ability of a solution to mimic a natural operation in order to provide an ecosystem service is a measure of the degree of naturalness of the action. A green infrastructure project seeks that, to the greatest extent possible, the solution contributes to the creation or restoration of some ecosystem services. Number four, use of local resources. The implementation of the solution may involve local resources, both material and human. This allows reducing project costs, creating a source of employment for the locals and promoting their participation. Number five, participation of local actors. Involving local communities in the project is an important element for their success. From the diagnosis of the problem, the selection of the solution, the execution of the action and the monitoring of the results, the participation of the decision makers and key actors is recommended. Number six, designed and or adaptation of solutions. 
Taking into account previous experiences for the selection of a solution allows to use the knowledge already generated to improve the design of the project. However, it is important to consider that if the measure is being taken as a reference, it is actually applicable to the problem you are looking to solve and, even more important, you will need to adapt the solution correctly to the unique characteristics of each site. Number 7. Resistance and Resilience of the Intervention the capacity of the intervened system to respond to long periods of calms and the occurrence of extreme events is a measure of the resilience of the project, and that should be considered for the design. Number eight, adaptability of the solution. The flexibility or adaptability of the project refers to the possibility of the solution to be modified over time, adapt and be more efficient. This may include the development of projects in different phases, where a short-term solution is chosen to give an immediate response, followed by a medium-term and long-term solutions that guarantee the resilience of the project. These factors include technical elements in planning, design and implementation, but also social aspects, and they are part of a cycle that must be under continuous evaluation for project monitoring. To finish my participation, I would like to end with these final ideas. This type of projects can offer the opportunity to mitigate coastal risk, integrating the local socioeconomic and political realities, while favoring the recovery of natural capital. In the long term, green infrastructure needs less investment than traditional infrastructure because it tends to be self-sustaining or need low maintaining costs. The diagnosis and monitoring of the site are vital for the success of green infrastructure projects, and biodiverse regions have many opportunities and feasibility for green infrastructure, but have the challenges of generating local technical capacities, the search for economic resources, and the establishment of intersectoral communication. I would like to thank the IDB for the technical cooperation with the Instituto de Ingeniería and the Semilla Oceano for enabling the participation in this conference. Gracias.